What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build. New merch, baby! Woo! And it's time for just the tip. That creeps me out every time. But we are here for a couple of tips to help you when you're using your rotary tool with your diode laser. Today I'll be demonstrating on my X-Tool D1 10 watt laser. That's this guy right here. Ain't she pretty? After this video, if you're interested in purchasing one of these for yourself, I will leave a link and a promo code down below. Now this first part is going to be X-Tool specific because I just wanna show you how easy it is to get from where it is now to set up to use your rotary tool. If you're using a different laser, I'll put the timestamp down below on where to jump to for the first tip. Just the tip. Okay, so the X-Tool comes with these removable legs. We're just gonna screw those in. And then the plug-in is right here. Are you ready for tip number one? The tip number one is slow down your gantry speed or your rotary speed. This is probably the biggest issue that a lot of you face with your images getting kind of skewed and things like that. I have my clipboard here because I'm not sure exactly how to change this in Lightburn, so I'm going to direct you to a video by Louisiana Hobby Guy in the uh, description down below. But in Lightburn, you go under some machine settings, change your min, max acceleration, and your idle acceleration, I believe. And I think you can also slow that down in rotary setup in Lightburn. Let me to demonstrate. You have something on your rotary and it's running fairly slow when it's cutting, but when it's jogging back and forth, it goes faster. I'll show you how to turn this down in laser box in just a second, but basically what ends up happening is when it spins back, it's it's going to overshoot. It's going to it's going to jog it a little bit. Okay, for demonstration purposes, I have a 20 ounce black tumbler on the rotary. We've lined up the yellow mark to the laser crosshairs on the X tool. Now I've turned the speed all the way up in LaserBox Basic just to kind of give you an idea of what is happening here. So I'm gonna frame. See how that's off now? So let's say I frame two or three times because I'm just trying to make sure that my laser is where I want it to be. See how it gets off a little bit more every time? Now, if I put that back and I turn this down to something like, so right now that's running at 150 millimeters per second, which is what I think it defaults to. Uh, but if I turn that down to like say 30, watch how much smoother and easier it goes. I've got this going out of there, so it's out of the way, but. Bam, see that? So slow your rotary down. It makes a huge difference. Up here, we're gonna hit the play button. When you come in, there's two things you wanna change when you're doing cylinders. First, this is the speed I was talking about. This thing goes a max of 150, but I usually turn mine down, depending on the size of it, I either turn it down to 50, or sometimes I turn it down to 20. And the other thing you need to make sure of is to click your cylinder working so it knows to rotate it and not run on the X and Y axis. Axis? To not run on the X and Y axis. The third thing that I do, this is just personal preference, is I always move my starting point of the laser, this blue dot, from here to the top of whatever I'm going to laser engrave, and then I line the, the crosshairs up with where I want my engrave to start on the cylinder. Which brings us to tip number two. Frame, people, frame. Always frame at least minimum twice. No kidding, you should always, unless it's something that you're so confident is gonna run the same way it always does, frame, frame, frame. Especially if you're moving from engraving flat objects to round ones. Before I started doing this, I can't tell you how many times I would start the laser and it would and I would have forgotten to change it to cylinder and it just starts engraving all over the place. But just frame, frame, frame. That should be just ingrained in your brain every time you're gonna start a project. Always run a frame and then double check it and run another frame. Now, when it comes to framing, a lot of times you're framing something that doesn't have anything on it. So you're not sure if your rotation's going where you want it to go. 
So sub caveat tip is pick up some China markers, which these are just those like kind of grease pencils, super cheap. I'll link them down below. But this way I can mark on here where my starting point is. <gasps> And then when I spin it, I know I'm coming back to my starting point. So that gives me an idea on if there's a setting off or not. And then this stuff just rubs off or you can take it off with a little bit of uh, a little bit of alcohol or something. Probably come off the magic eraser, baby. Tip number three. Know the orientation of your rotary. It sounds simple, but I can't tell you how many times I've seen somebody complaining in a laser group that their image is inverted or it's backwards and it's because they have the rotary in the machine incorrectly. Now, if you have something like this, like the Orture rotary, your image is going to need to be inverted or your text is gonna be a need to be inverted. I will again point you to Louisiana Hobby Guy's video for setting that up. The X-Tool rotary as long as you have it set up correctly, you don't have to flip anything. So when you set it up, you should be able to read all of this stuff. It shouldn't be upside down. There are actually some marketing pictures on Xtool's website where this is the opposite way, which is how I set it up initially. I think they just did that because they thought it looked better. But you should be able to read this. The target should be furthest away from you and to the right. All right guys, and I just wanted to jump in here in between the tips. That's weird. To tell you guys that the Build Dead Build merch store is now open. I've been working on it on my website. It is now open. I will link it down below. Go check it out. Tell me what you think. Pick something up if that's your thing. Check out this shirt, which just simply says offensive because I am. And new Build Dead Build logo on the back. If you hit that merch store, stop on by my Patreon channel. Which reminds me, I would just like to say thanks to all of my patrons for making the magic happen. Especially, especially, especially my top tier or boiler maker patrons. Steven Mann, Eric Weiss, Derek Coates, Chuck Faulkner, Puffy Muffins, Andy the Viking, Dwight Smith, Christopher Walters, Todd Stewart, and Franklin the Tanklin. Cheers. It's like, 10 in the morning. But there has been a lot of craziness over on my Patreon page lately. Go check it out. Join up if that's your thing. Tip four. If you've marked your tumbler and you're still seeing that it is slipping a little bit, we want to add a little bit more grip. So don't forget your rubbers. Bands, don't forget your rubber bands. So I'll link these down below as well. I just got some wide rubber bands from Amazon. There's nothing special, they're a couple of bucks. But what you're gonna do is go ahead and take at least one or two of them. Ooh, you're gonna take one or two of them, wrap them around your object, and it's gonna give you a little bit more grip on your rotary. I've also heard of people using painter's tape to do the same thing. Johnny Five still alive. Five. Let's talk wedges and jigs. I've done a couple of other videos on how to engrave things that are not perfectly cylindrical. So they, like a pint glass tapers up, things like that. But you can do something as simple as using, this is just a, a door stop, a wide door stop that I got off of Amazon for a couple of bucks. So you can just use a wedge to bring your glass up until it's level. I also got these awesome little levels just for this. And you can just kind of tweak it out until you get it just where you want it. Now, if you're doing something more like this, that's not gonna work, you can cut your own jig on your laser. You just need to measure the distance from here to here and the distance from here to here. And then you can just slide this guy on there and you've leveled yourself out. I made a video on how to do this in detail. I will link that up here someplace. Now, if you're not in the mood for my, my style of ghetto janky jigs, you can also purchase like some 3D printed options. I will link those down below as well, or one of those down below. And basically it's like a little adjuster that goes on one end that'll level you out. Speaking of jigs, the next question I get asked on the regular is, how do I engrave something with a handle on it? Like a coffee cup. Well, I don't have a great solution for you. I have kind of a, it's questionable solution for you. If only somebody would make a Chuck style rotary for a diode laser. Here is my jig. <laughs> so 
you kind of have to play around with it a little bit, but you want to find something that weighs about the amount of the handle and tape it on the other side, like so. And that brings us to tip number six. In order to keep your objects more sturdy on the rotary, you want to weight your objects. Larger objects, I usually use like a bean bag from a cornhole game and kind of jam it in there and push it down like so. Smaller objects like our coffee mug right here that we're gonna experiment on. This is, <laughs> this is a Ziploc bag full of rice covered in duct tape. That's how we roll at Build That Build. But I have used small bean bags like uh, from my kid's play set before. Uh, and I'll link those down below too if you wanna pick up a set of those that are 15 bucks or something, I don't know. But that weight gives us more friction, right? So as we're pushing down on it, we're less likely to flop side to side. Just make sure your weight's distributed equally inside the cylinder. Okay, so let's put everything together now. We've already slid this down. I have my mark on here, so when I frame, I, I have my reference point. I'm not really using anything for any additional friction because I feel like this is good enough. We have our jig right here. Look at that fancy thing. I'm patenting that, patent pending. And I've weighted this. So now we're just gonna drop this into the rotary. And after that, me telling you all the things you should take into consideration before you start your engrave, I actually forgot to focus the laser. So I had to stop and come back and recalibrate everything. So it happens to all of us. Focus people, focus. Okay, and fresh off the presses. Check that out. So we were going for kind of a subtler, engrave if you want to go darker you're just going to slow your speed down so like if you can see here this is one pass on this mug and this is a start i don't know if you can see that that's a start of a second pass i would suggest slowing it down before you do a second pass because if you do jog for any reason you're going to like kind of ghost your image all right guys i hope you learned something today if you like this video, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out and doesn't cost you squat. Now, until next time, thanks for playing. And I gotta get to work. Can you hear me? Especially if you're moving from engraving flat objects to cylinder. Cyl Have you ever seen a white girl twerk? <laughs> That's what it sounds like.